Welcome to Lecture B of Learning from Mistakes, Error Reporting and Analysis and HIT. In this segment, we will discuss error reporting and analysis and its relationship to HIT. The objectives for this lecture of Learning from Mistakes, Error Reporting and Analysis and HIT are to assess HIT for unintended negative consequences, Examine common themes in HIT design deficiencies. There are a variety of ways to classify errors. This is one way that is used by AHRQ. Errors can be classified as acts of commission, doing something wrong, or acts of omission, failing to do the right thing. Here are two examples in healthcare. An example of an error of commission is ordering a medication for a patient with a documented allergy to that medication. An example of an error of omission is failing to prescribe medications to prevent blood clots in patients who are at high risk for such clots. Errors of commission are easier to recognize than are errors of omission. There are probably many more instances in which additional testing, treatment, or preventive measures would have improved care outcomes than there are circumstances in which the care given should not have been provided. Another way to classify errors has been proposed by James Reason. Reason describes active failures and latent conditions. Active failures occur at the point of contact between a person and the system. We refer to these failures at the sharp end. They are usually readily apparent. Examples of active failure would be pushing an incorrect computer key or ignoring a warning light. Latent conditions represent failure of the system design or organization. We refer to these conditions as conditions at the blunt end. They are less apparent. Examples of latent conditions include when a facility has multiple types of infusion pumps, increasing the likelihood of programming error or the time pressure that clinicians confront during the course of everyday patient care. Other examples of active failures are ignoring warning lights, operating on the wrong arm, incorrectly programming an IV pump, inadequate equipment, Reason has also taught us that we can classify errors by basing them on the cognitive psychology of task-oriented behavior. He describes slips, or lapses in concentration, and mistakes, or incorrect choices. Slips arise when we are also dealing with emotions, fatigue, and stress while performing an activity that has become reflexive. An example of a slip is when we overlook a step in a routine task due to a memory lapse. Have you ever turned the dishwasher on before putting in the soap tablet? Mistakes, on the other hand, are incorrect choices that arise during active problem solving. An example of a mistake is selecting the wrong diagnostic test. Reason writes that, quote, reducing the risk of slips requires attention to the designs of protocols, devices, and work environments. Using checklists so key steps will not be omitted reducing fatigue among personnel, or shifting high-risk work away from personnel who have been working extended hours, removing unnecessary variation in the design of key devices, eliminating distractions, such as phones, from areas where work requires intense concentration and other redesign strategies, unquote. Reducing the likelihood of mistakes typically requires more training or supervision. Studies of Computerized Provider Order Entry, or CPOE, have revealed nine categories of unintended consequences. First, large unanticipated changes in the amount and nature of work appears to be a regular theme. New processes are introduced with technology, such as required fields, alerts that require the clinician to respond, the need to use more than one password, when there are multiple systems that are not integrated, and reliance on system responsiveness. In addition, there have been reports of slow system response times, increased documentation time, greater numbers of ordering steps, and higher task complexity. Ash and colleagues describe five types of unintended consequences that relate to workflow. 
the workflow process itself. Clinical personnel, policy and procedure, interaction of humans and computers, situational awareness. Depending on one's role, implementing an EHR can have significant effects on workflow. For example, in the paper world, the clerical staff may have questioned daily chest x-ray orders in the past. In the electronic world, they no longer serve this gatekeeper function, since orders are directly entered by the prescriber and clerical personnel are no longer attuned to these orders. Existing workflows that are dysfunctional using a paper documentation system may be exacerbated with a change to an electronic system. For example, there may have been circumstances that allowed people in some roles to overstep their clinical role boundaries to support clinical workflow. In the electronic system, rights are often assigned by role. And if an individual was previously doing things outside of their role, even when based on an order, the system will not allow that individual to continue. Sometimes electronic systems have been designed such that they do not allow for staff to follow hospital policy or procedure. For example, if a policy stated that there must be a counter signature for high alert drugs and a field for this counter signature was not configured on the electronic medication record, it will be difficult for staff to follow policy unless they figure some sort of workaround. The interaction between the user and the computer is another source of error. If the user does not use the system in the way that it has been designed to be used, there can be unintended consequences. For example, if a prescriber writes drug instructions in a quote, free text unquote field, and that information does not pass to the pharmacy information system, this could result in an error. With remote access, there could be more than one prescriber entering the same order within 30 seconds of each other from different locations, causing duplication. Neither prescriber would be aware of this immediately, and it may not be picked up until orders were reviewed. Ash also notes that there are never-ending system demands. These include such things as the need for continuous system and hardware upgrades and the need to find places to store additional hardware. They also include the need to change existing documents and order configurations based on regulatory and clinical practice changes, the need to continually build new order sets in active research-oriented organizations, and a variety of other system maintenance demands, all of which can cause error. For example, the sheer magnitude of the work could cause the IT department to cut corners on testing in order to more quickly respond to clinical demand, resulting in error. In addition, changes to one aspect of the system often have downstream effects on another aspect of the system, so the need for vigilance is constant. Ever-present are the additional training demands and the complex task of maintaining decision support tables. Another type of unintended consequence relates to communication and emotions. There is a widespread illusion that just because someone documents information in a computer, the right person or persons will see it and act on it. This is especially problematic with STAT or emergency orders. In addition, many members of the healthcare team complain about the decrease in face-to-face -face communication. In ICU environments, where patient's status changes rapidly, the physician may give the nurse a verbal order to give a particular IV solution. The nurse may proceed to make up that solution and hang the IV bag, but the physician may change her mind in the time between the order discussion and the order writing and write a modified order. The nurse may not become aware of the modification until it is too late and an incorrect IV bag has already been hung and, in essence, wasted. While the intent is to decrease reliance on paper processes, many people are reluctant to give up their paper. People use paper for temporary, handwritten information until they can enter it into the computer at a later time, 
increasing the potential for transcription error. In addition, printed reports may still be required when transferring care to other providers. The accuracy of these reports must be thoroughly tested, however, as they can pull data from incorrect sources and result in error. Moving from paper to computer-based ordering is a significant transition, one that engenders a wide variety of emotions. Early adopters may be excited, but those who are not happy about the transition can respond very negatively. This can affect not only their work, but that of others and can lead to error. Ash and her colleagues also warn that there are new kinds of errors emerging as unintended consequences of HIT. Many of these new types of errors are based on problematic data presentations, such as confusing order option screens or inappropriate text entries by the clinician. This can lead to user confusion and user error. When presented with pick lists, also known as drop-down lists, clinicians can inadvertently select the option above or below the intended option. This is particularly problematic when they inadvertently select the wrong patient name from a census list, which can lead to patient identification errors. Computer screens can only display a finite amount of information at one time. There may be information lost as one is scrolling up and down and users may enter data in the wrong fields because the right fields may not be readily apparent. Unexpected power structure changes are common unintended consequences of HIT. System configurations control who may and may not interact with the EHR through role-based organizations. The IT department appears to gain power since the system must be configured for it to react in desired ways. Administration may dictate that the system be configured in a particular way or that standardization should occur in a certain way. The provider may not agree and a power struggle ensues. For example, the system can be configured such that a provider may not be able to order those tests or medication that he prefers or he may be forced to adhere to a clinical practice guideline that may not be appropriate for the particular patient, according to the prescriber's clinical judgment. In addition, space may limit the flexibility of narratives. Clinicians often complain that the patient's story gets lost when there are too many pick lists and character-limited free text boxes. Finally, the process of standardizing orders across prescribers may result in confusion for those providers who would have normally approached the plan in a different sequence or manner. People who are using electronic documentation for a long time may forget how to document on paper. They can become over-dependent on technology and may be confused about what to do during a computer outage. If multiple systems that are not integrated are in use, the downtime may only affect a few systems. Or downtime procedures may be different for each instance of downtime, depending on the system affected. This can cause great confusion. In addition, when the computer comes back online, people may be uncertain about how much information should be back entered. Clinicians have been known to think that if something is in the computer, it must be correct. If auto calculations are not configured appropriately, the clinician may act on wrong information. Just because there is a number in the field does not mean that the number makes clinical sense. The clinician must always think critically and ask questions when data does not make sense. While there has been quite a lot of attention to errors in the CPOE component of the EHR, there has been much less attention to errors in documents and flow sheets. One error that is beginning to surface is the copy-paste error. The error is the result of functionality that allows a provider to copy information from a previous note, either one written by that provider or one written by somebody else, by someone else and paste that information into a new note. Of course, this helps to expedite the task of note entry. However, this practice has led to the perpetuation of erroneous and incomplete information 
duplication of error, and loss of narrative. Notes no longer reflect the orderly progression of a provider's thoughts and actions. Problem lists never change and get passed on for eternity, even when problems are no longer in effect. In instances where clinicians have to attest to authorship or legal responsibility for data, this can be problematic if they do not thoroughly read the note. Such errors often lead to lost revenue due to billing compliance rules. This concludes Lecture B of Learning from Mistakes, Error Reporting, and Analysis and HIT. In summary, we started with the reference to the work of the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, AHRQ, and another visit to the theoretical work of James Reason in regards to the classification of error. The distinction was made between the errors of omission and commission, and latent conditions and active failures. Do you remember which of these last two types of errors occurs at the, quote, sharp, unquote, end? Can you recall the difference between slips and mistakes? Finally, we focused on the work of Dr. Joan Ash and others, where we detailed several of the frequently encountered unintended consequences of health IT. From shifts in power to changes in communication patterns and changes in the character of work, these consequences of HIT can have notable impact on the work environment and actually engender error in unexpected ways. The experienced and wise HIT professionals have an acute awareness of these sorts of consequences. They keep a sharp lookout, they anticipate, and they plan carefully. Will you?